Monday, everybody. We are back with the extravaganza results, so make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss out on this excellent content. I spent pretty much, yeah, this one was much faster, actually. We got all this information put together in about 15 minutes. I'm actually very happy, and I want to thank all of you that helped make this possible. If you guys did well with Rogue, please send me over the list. But this is going to be our breakdown on the top 16 for the January North America extravaganza event. So let's dig on into this, shall we? These results were very interesting. For this being the last ride before Blazing Vortex for competitive events, this rogue category here did not go the way that I thought. And I've already heard people going, this is some very interesting results. So first up, we had five Drytron in this event. And I found that we know this, all right? Like, it shouldn't surprise anybody that Drytron is the highest represented deck. I mean, Ritual, Ben 10. Uh, I did see a little bit of a shift away from Vanity's Ruler, and I've talked about that previously, but we'll establish that a little bit more. So that shouldn't surprise anybody. Now, the interesting part about this entire breakdown is the Eldritch category. All right, now, this isn't just your standard pure Eldritch. Oh, no, 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 no. Third place was playing Striker Eldlich. All right, what in the actual world is going on right now? Do you want to tell me how we have Striker Eldlich functionally working? The winner of the event was playing Invoked Eldlich too, which I was like, what is going on here? Like, I've seen some Striker Eldlich list from Japan recently. I was like, well, that's kind of cool, all right? Like, yeah, they have Engage. So I didn't think much about it come the TCG here. And then all of a sudden, it's like, third place, Striker Eldlich. Invoked Eldlich was won by Bryce here. And we'll cover his list in a second, by the way. But, like, that's really, really interesting. And then, oh, don't worry. We also had Dogmatic Eldlich in top cut. And we also had Numeron Eldlich in top cut. Wow. I, I, I'm I'm genuinely excited because not only like no Eldritch variant was like super overrepresented, there was also not Zoo Eldritch here. These were all like the lesser known versions of Eldritch, which was actually really freaking cool. Alright, so I know I know it's Eldritch, but like come on, I man, you gotta be excited. Like Striker Eldritch, that's kinda cool. Alright, so and invoked winnings, actually really awesome. Now, down the pipeline here, we also had the two Virtual World decks in Top Cut. Can't be too mad about that. This deck's basic. This deck has been fighting with Drytron all format. It's, like, been a back and forth between the two of these. Um, and for this event, it looks like that Rogue definitely outsmarted some of the top metagame. Now, in the Rogue category here, pure... Numeron, baby. Oh my gosh. Later on today, I'm going to cover Emmanuel Lilly's list for you guys. And we also have the Sky Striker list later on, too, that you guys can look forward to seeing in a, another video. But pure freaking Numeron got the chance to shine this event. Wow, that's absolutely amazing. I'm so happy to see that. Elise Davis strikes back again with the one at Emancipator Praying Kids. We've recently saw this deck kind of take DB by storm. Uh, we saw Cody was playing it on his stream. Uh, we kind of went through and we talked about it being something a little bit more reminiscent of things. I also see that we have Sky Striker here. Like I said, we have that list later on today for you guys. And... Frickin' Goki made it in, all right? Now, this one really interested me because uh, Goki finished ninth place, all right? I don't currently have the list. I will see if I can get it here at some point. But, yeah, Goki Toolbox me. I'm assuming that this is more like your standard warrior toolbox where you're using the Phantom Knights to kind of pressure the opponent. Oh, and speaking of Phantom Knights, we also had the one Phantom Knight deck making it on into the top cut. Uh, I, do, I do not believe it was, uh, my, my notes that I got was just Phantom Knights, so I don't think it was playing the Infer Noble engine uh, from the Duelist. He got 15th place, uh, Devin Jackson. So that was actually interesting. He, he barely squeaked in, which was not a bad thing overall. And then the, well, the loser of the event was 
my dear friend Ba. She got 17th place playing Drytron. So, would have been 6 Drytron, but unfortunately one of them had to bubble. The Shadal Revolution looks like it did not take hold this event, but instead, it looks like Eldritch had a revolution. The, the unfortunate downside is, yeah, Zoo Eldritch did not perform. Actually, Zoo didn't perform at all in this top 16, which you're starting to see the format shifting here. I, and I do know that, yeah, Blazing is on the horizon here. There is some game-changing stuff in that set. Yeah, Pot of Prosperity. Uh, but with that being said, though, you've, you've already seen that Zoo is kind of left. All right. We've been talking about Shadal taking more of the rogue side of things. And looking at this top cut, Eldritch did wonderful. So I'm very excited for that. Now, we're going to pass it on over and we're going to look at some of the top decks from this event. This really throws back what Invoked really was evolving on. So this is... Bryce, Chloe's list. I'm going to leave a link down below for his YouTube channel. That way you guys can check it out. I told him I'd give it a shout out so everybody can check it out. Um, expect probably a review over there a little bit more formally on that side of things. So down below, all right? Now that being said, though, this definitely is a little bit more of a flashback here. I can't tell you the last time I saw Magician Souls being played in this. Also playing the Palladium Oracle Mana displaced for this engine, which is actually really cool. I also see that we have a callback here for the Black Awakening and the White Destiny. A lot of players have long since cut this, so to see this basically returning back to the metagame is actually really cool. We also have the one Red Eyes Fusion in here. If you're not really pushing for this, this is going to be one of those things that if you're able to get to the Verte and resolve it, or if you hard draw it, it doesn't really hinder the deck. I know a few people are like, well, you should be playing three of these in this style of deck. No, one is fine, all right? You're going to get it out through the Verte, and then you're going to laugh at your opponent as you've got a Dragoon on the field post-combo. Outside of that, we've also gone back to the three Haguero here. I've heard the infinite argument for two versus three for this format, so seeing this in a higher representation is actually quite nice. Outside of that, the build feels very standard. It's definitely, like I said, a flash back from the general progression and things that we've seen, especially with the Imperms coming back. Imperm has had a whole back seat for this whole format, and to see this actually storming back now is very quite interesting. Also, Side deck here, uh, with the whole access to the Nibiru's here instead of maining them, is quite nice. I also see here that we've cut the Almirage and the Secure Gardener to make room for some more stuff. We're just more focusing on the Artemis link for this build. So that's definitely interesting. So that's your first place list from Mr. Bryce. Remember to check him out down below. Alright, next up, we have second place, and this is Noah Jimison's list for everybody here. Now, keep in mind that this is, in fact, Drytron. I know there's nothing too exciting about this, but we have taken the step back, actually, from playing Vanity's Ruler. Um, I guess with a return of Imperm, question mark, um, they've just been pushing the... Vanity's Ruler out, so there's no real issues there. Also starting to see that Instant Fusion has become that key piece now. If you're able to see this and get the Millennium Eyes on the field, you're basically able to play very safely, which is going to resolve you the chance to play the game, all right? So, yes, a lot of more emphasis now on this one tech choice here. Vanity's Ruler phasing itself out of the format. Outside of that, there's nothing too particularly crazy about this. Um, this build has pretty much become very standardized over the long run here. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. But general progression, Vandy's Ruler falling off. And more emphasis towards the Instant Fusion sauce. Alright, next up, we have Elise Davis's very, very, very very standardized Adam Emancipator praying kits. Now, nothing has really changed from this list from the previous one that we covered. Actually, Elise said that they were the exact same. Uh, there's nothing too crazy to say about this, but Elise did finish in um, fifth place for this event in top cut, which means that the reliability of this build is still pretty much the same. Still the two double parallel exit, the talents and the droplets here still being pretty much essential staple pieces, uh, and the shift out of the Nibiru's 
Um, like I said, Nibiru's kind of taking a step back in the format here. You're really starting to see it pushed into side decks here. So yes, at Emancipator Praying Kids, with this being a rock, giving you the additional basic link material uh, to step on into and set up other pieces. And I know a few people, are like, but Pandemonium sometimes doesn't come up. It is another resource that you can have for the deck. So don't underestimate the things that you're able to resolve, especially in a deck like this. All right, having access to Mr. Ballard Butler down here to fully disrupt an opponent's field is a very, very good feeling. All right, and then the last list I have for everybody today, uh, this is going to be Ryan Sano's list. And this is Virtual World. I told him we would go ahead and cover it here. So we got eighth place. He was the final one in the bubble here. And I believe looking at this, he was the only virtual world player to make top eight. There were two in top 16, but he was the only one to finish in the top eight. With that being said, we've also, we're also not playing Italy in here, which I found kind of interesting. Um, seeing a little bit of a step back from that. Now, obviously, we do have the new one coming out here very soon. That's going to kind of modify some of the strategy here. That's why I'm not putting such of an emphasis on it. But this does say that, hey... You don't need talents. You can side them, all right? Uh, that's one big thing that I've seen a lot of players talking about. It's like, yeah, you can kind of cut the talents. And this also proves that you don't need the e-tally to play the deck, which is actually kind of cool, all things being said. So this is the only virtual world deck in top eight, Ryan Sano's list for everybody. And this wraps up the breakdown for this video. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on more excellent content. Please praise me down in the comments. This is a lot of work. I do hope you guys enjoy this. I also got to give a shout out to Akino for helping me put this together. I'm really glad that we were able to bring you guys this style of content and I hope that we'll be able to do this more so in the future. I now say that on the third video that we've done this. Actually, I think this might be the fourth, but I do hope that you guys do enjoy this information and I'll continue to do that for you guys. All right, so see you later. <laughs> Thank you, patrons, for making the ride never truly end without you guys' support. Well, I would probably be doing Drumple Shuffle videos for a living. Guys, please check out Vanquil 40 for all of your card fight Vanguard content brought to you by Mcol 40 And if you are looking to pick up singles, check out mcolgames.com for your trading card game needs. Thanks for watching, everybody.